Mysticism does not come from the East, it comes from within. Before you attempt anything that is considered as a mystical process, it's very important to stabilize the five fundamental elements within us. These are known as panchabhutas or mahatattvas in the yogic science. This body, this very earth, the universe and the cosmos, all are just a play of five elements. This body's composition is such that seventy-two percent of this body is water, approximately twelve percent is earth, six percent is air, four percent is fire and the rest is space or akash. How these five elements behave within you will determine just about everything. Bhuta means element, Bhuta Shuddhi means to become free from the taint of elements or to cleanse the element, it means to become free from the physical nature. Right now, the physiological and the psychological processes are having a complete grip over most human beings. What we call as our physiology is something that we accumulated. What we call as our psychological process, the whole content for this is also accumulated in the form of impressions. Between these two, who you are or existentially what is the nature of your being is completely missed. If one wants to access dimensions which are not it in your experience, dimensions which are considered mystical, first thing that we need to do is to start cleansing the five elements so that in the purity of the elements, you distinctly know the difference between what is physical, what is psychological and what is existential. There is substantial evidence today to show that water has a great sense of memory. Everything that happens around a body of water is in some way stored in the water molecules. It is being referred to as a fluid computer. Among the five elements, water acquires the greatest significance because seventy-two percent of this body is water. If we take sufficient care about the water that we consume, not just in terms of its purity, it being bacteria-free and those kind of things, but the way the water is kept, in what kind of container you keep it, how you keep it, how you touch it, how you approach it. Because there is substantial scientific evidence today to show you that a thought, an emotion, a touch, these things can change the molecular structure of the water and greatly alter the way water behaves within your system. So, one needs to understand, you are not dealing with the commodity, you are dealing with life-making material. Water is life. It is just that right now it's outside of you. So before it enters your system, how you treat it? If you keep the water in a container which is metallic, preferably copper or an alloy of copper, and every day if you wash it with an organic substance and keep the water in a place where it is not touched by other smells and other substances, there is sufficient space around it and when you approach it, if you can just hold this vessel with your hands with a certain sense of gratitude and reverence because this is life-making material and then consume it, you will see it will do wonders within your system. Healthfulness and equanimity will be a natural consequence of this. The soil that you walk upon has a certain sense of intelligence and memory. So even if you happen to live in a concrete jungle, it is important to keep in touch with the earth upon which you live. Create ways for yourself to somehow remain in touch with the soil or the earth upon which you live, that part of the earth. With your bare hands and bare feet, see particularly the palms and the soles, if they come in touch 
with the earth on a daily basis at least for a few minutes. A certain harmonizing of the physiological process will happen just being in contact with the earth. If you spend at least a few minutes in your garden, barefooted, touching plants or trees, because this is the basis of your life. All life, yours and every other creature has come out of this earth. Stay in touch with it and harmonize your system. Though air represents only six percent of your body's elemental constitution, it is the most dynamic part of the element in terms of the transaction that happens on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. What kind of air you breathe is definitely important and that's well known, but how you breathe and how consciously you breathe is equally important. Especially those of you who are living in large cities, the kind of air that you breathe may not be in your hands. So it's good at least for a few minutes, take a walk in the park, along the lake or the river or whatever is available to you. Especially if you have children, it is important that you take them out at least once a month, far away enough from the city where nature is in reasonably pure state, where they can climb a small hill or walk in a forest or swim in a river, something natural to be in touch with nature and to do something where breath will be in a dynamic state. This is not just for aerobic exercise, because constant exchange of air is happening from within and without and the very intelligence in the body will take care of this, that when it senses the air is pure and alive, the way the body breathes is different, you can notice this and the exchange will happen, cleansing will happen within the system because breath per se is only one to two percent of the air transaction. The rest is happening in many other ways. So if you remain in pure air, it's important that you bring breath to a dynamic state with a certain activity. You don't have to do too vigorous an activity, just enough to see that you're breathing deep enough slightly deeper than normal is happening to you for a period of time and especially for growing children, this becomes very important because this will greatly enhance the body's integrity and strength. But on a daily basis, if you're not able to take yourself out within the house, you can do a simple yogic practice called Nadi Shuddhi to cleanse the breath. Fire accounts for four percent of your elemental makeup. What kind of fire burns within you? Is it the fire of greed, hatred, resentment, anger, lust, love, compassion? If you take care of that, once again, your physical and mental well-being is well taken care of. You become an equanimous and exuberant being. A simple process you can do to cleanse the fire within you is get some sunlight every day. Fortunately, you cannot contaminate the sunlight, though we have contaminated every other element, sunlight has remained pure, make best use of that. If you wish to use fire, you can light a fire with an organic substance like straw or firewood without any oil and stand facing the fire with your hands open and keep your eyes open for three minutes, then stand with your back to it, exposing your spine for three minutes. This will cleanse your aura and bring about a new sense of resurgence in the system. This is to rekindle and reconnect the fire within with the fires outside. This is the basis of all fire-based rituals in the East. If Having a fire is not very practical for you, at least a lamp with vegetable oils or ghee. You light a lamp and be around this lamp, first face the lamp and sit and then turn around and sit so that the fire element within you gets rekindled.
the fifth and the most expansive dimension of the elemental composition is akash or etheric space. This has a certain intelligence. How this akashic intelligence behaves within you determines the nature of your life. The nature, quality and the power of your life essentially is determined by how much excess can you find into the akashic intelligence. As I said, this is an expansive part of the elemental composition. That means there is no limit, there is only that much water, there is only that much air, that much earth and that much fire. But the akashic dimension is a limitless possibility if you find excess. In a limitless manner, both your perception and intelligence can grow. One simple process you can do to find more excess to akash or the akashic intelligence is, after sunrise, before the sun crosses a thirty degree angle, you look up at the sky once and bow down to akash for holding you and this planet in place. After the sun crosses thirty degrees, sometime during the day, any time, look up and bow down again after the sunset. Within the forty minutes after sunset, look up at the sky and once again bow down. You are not bowing to any imaginary gods up there, just to the etheric space around us, which is holding everything that we are in place. If you get the akash to cooperate with your life energies, life will happen in magical ways. An intelligence that you have never thought possible will become yours. For a human being to have an element of grace in their lives, Shambhavi Mudra is a process that is like opening a window so that one becomes receptive to grace.